awesome. Excited to be here. Have you ever had like an idea that you thought was really yours, like truly original? Um, like <clears throat> may have been like an invention idea or a word that you thought you came up with that was yours? That's fagicated for me. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of that before, but I'm coining it. And uh, let me tell you a quick story about like the genesis of that word, fagicated. So I was, <clears throat> I met this guy through networking, and he, he had played a lot of college football, high level linemen, and he had successfully lost a hundred pounds, okay, twice, and gained it back. And um, and he knew all about the intricacies of all these different diets and, and fads. And I'm not here to talk down on any particular diet or fad, but he had done keto, you know. He had done intermittent fasting. He had gone gluten-free and he even stacked them. You know, he did gluten-free, keto, and intermittent fasting all combined, you know. And, I, and as I got to talking with him, I'm like, and I developed a relationship with him. I could speak some truth into his life and I'm like, Bro, you are fagicated. And that's when it hit me. I'm like, wow, that is a good word. I think I'm going to use that. And that's like four years ago. So if you've heard it recently, just remember it started four years ago with that statement right there. And, and the more I've talked with people over the years, the hyper-awareness around all these different diets, what I'm finding is people might be hyper-aware and they might be very intelligent on a particular diet, but where we're lacking is being brilliant at the basics, okay? Everyone's majoring in the minors, but they're not being brilliant in the basics of understanding the foundation of nutrition. So that's what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to defagicate you all, okay? So, now, here's the real driving force. And before I even drive, talk about the real driving force, let's talk about the reality. Despite the hyper-awareness of health and wellness, the reality of our situation in our country of America, 75% of our population struggles with this area. They're, they're overweight or obese, okay? Um, that's an epidemic, okay? Despite all the stuff going on around us right now, okay? And it's predicted by 2030 that 85% of adults are gonna be overweight or obese. That's terrifying. It should be terrifying. And what's even more terrifying, if you've got kiddos, 30% of kids right now are um, fat, uh, challenged with obesity and they're the first generation that is expected to live not in as long as their parents did. That's scary stuff. So that's the, that's the heaviness of this topic. It's not just to defagicate. It's about to change some lives tonight. So the real game changer. A little play on words here. Um, if you've seen the, the documentary Game Changer, okay, I'm not, I don't have time to go down that trail. But um, kind of misleading, we'll just say that. But the real game changer around getting right with our nutrition is Kiko, okay? Kiko, coronavirus one and coronavirus zero. I'm joking. <laughs> Kiko means calories in, calories out, if you haven't heard that acronym before. Okay, now let, let's, let's go down that coronavirus thing just for a second because there's something I've noticed recently amongst um, legitimate or not you know amongst the mass hysteria is you read an article on how to prevent this thing right and real groundbreaking stuff wash your hands for 20 seconds right and I've even read a couple articles that are like floss your teeth get seven to eight hours of sleep at night stay well hydrated eat your fruits and veggies and I'm like that's like half my presentation <laughs> You know, I mean, so really just be a healthy human being, right? Um, there's even, so calories in, calories out. It really drives weight loss or weight gain. Despite what you might read, despite what you may have heard, it's, all, it's as close to scientific fact as you're going to find, okay? That if you eat more than you bring in, you are going to gain weight, okay? If you eat less than you burn, okay, you're going to lose weight. Really good concept. It works every single time, okay? In fact, a professor, okay, a professor, I believe at Stanford, did a study to prove to his students that calories in, calories out works every time. And, he, and you can Google this, the Twinkie Oreo study, where he comprised his diet, he made sure he was in a calorie deficit, burning more than he was bringing in on Twinkies and Oreos, 
and it should be said he did drink a couple protein shakes and take a multivitamin just to fill the nutritional gaps, but his, largely his calories were comprised of Twinkies and Oreos. Guess what happened? Lost weight. 27 pounds in 17 weeks. And not only that, his blood profile improved. All those markers that we look for when we go for a physical improved. Not to, not to endorse, hey, let's all eat Twinkies and Oreos all the time, but to prove a point that when you get in a caloric deficit and when you lose unwanted body fat and body weight, things improve in your body. Okay, it wasn't, now we're not advocating that, but we're advocating good eating, eating habits. So let's dive a little bit deeper into what makes up calories, okay? And their macronutrients. And what I've found in talking with people is they might understand the Kiko thing. They've heard that along the way, but what's a macro, okay? Does anyone know what the three macros are? Okay, go quick. Protein, carbs, and fats. Proteins, carbs, and fats, thank you, exactly. Okay, and we're gonna play a little game here in a little bit, but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna teach you with your hand how you always have a measuring stick, so to speak, about what your plate should look like if you just look down at your hand, okay? So, let's look at the first macronutrient. We got protein. Pretty important, all of them are important, by the way, okay? So, if, take out your hand for a second and imagine it without your fingers, okay? And that's your palm, all right? Every time we go to eat and we look down at our plate, we should have a palm's worth of protein. And for guys, probably two. Probably two. But at least a palm of protein every time that we eat. Okay? So every time you eat, look at your palm. You got a portion size right there. Okay? And then we got carbohydrates. Okay? If you take out your fists, everyone look at your fists real quick. Both of them. Come on. Put up your dukes. We're looking at veggies. If we can get fruits and veggies of two fistfuls on a plate, we're doing good. We're doing good. And then if, we, if you open up your hand into a cup, that's starchy carbs. That's like your brown rice, that's your quinoa, that's your pasta. Um, and that could even be a, a portion control uh, measurement stick for a scoop of ice cream, you know, a piece of cake. Okay, and that's not saying you should be at every single plate, but that makes sure that you don't overindulge and have multiple slices. Okay, and then there's fat. Everyone give a thumbs up. There's your thumb. Okay, that's a portion size for fat that should be on your plate. Okay, this one sometimes tricks people up. But if you can think about, if you can visualize a plate with at least a palm or two of protein on it, two fistfuls of fruits and veggies, okay, and a thumbs of fat, and if you were, could visualize that in food quantity, you'd be full. You wouldn't be like asking for seconds. You'd be getting a lot of good nutritious food and you'd be, and you'd be full. And more importantly, it's gonna drive a caloric deficit because you're not gonna get a bunch of empty calories, meaning your Kiko thing's going on. You're gonna be losing some LBs if that's what you're looking for. Some people aren't always looking for LBs though, or dropping LBs. Sometimes people wanna gain some LBs. I happen to be one of those guys sometimes. So, we're gonna play a game though, okay? A quick game because what I've found in talking with a lot of people is they struggle with identifying what a protein, carb, and fat is. They might understand what those macronutrients are, but when they look at a food, they're, they're misclassifying a carb as a protein or a protein as a fat. And, and if you misclassify those things, the Kiko thing might not work for you, okay? So I'm gonna grab a few examples of foods that I have over here. And when I'm going to go a countdown, I'm going to grab one and I'm going to say three, two, one. And I want you guys to all in unison say what you think it is. Okay. Say it loud and proud. Even if you're wrong, say it loud and proud because we might learn a few things. I hope I'm wrong, but I've done this enough where I found most people have really no clue. Okay. So we got just standard yogurt right here. Okay, so remember, in three, two, one, I want you to guess protein, carb, or fat. Three, two, one. Protein. Carb. Carb. Carbohydrate. Okay, trick. I may have tricked you just a little bit because, yes, there are, there are proteins and carbs and fats in many of these, but what dominates it? Carbohydrates. So when you're thinking about food, you got to go, hey, that's actually a carbohydrate. That's not really a, a good portion of protein. There's one. Let's see if we can learn our lesson here. We got a glass of milk, dairy milk. 
Three, two, one. Mass. Oh, confusion, mass confusion. I love it. Carb. Carbohydrate. It dominates the milk. Okay? Let's try another one. This is almonds. Protein. Portion size of problem. Hey, don't jump the gun. Three, two, one. Confusion again. It's fat. It's fat. Okay? It's fat. A lot of people crush almonds. And when I mean when I say crush, I mean they eat a lot of it. And, and what, they're, what they're finding is, how am I not losing weight? I'm eating all these almonds. Oh, they're pretty cal calorie dense because there's a lot of fat in it. There's actually there's some protein in it, yes, but it's a fat, okay? Cheese. <laughs> Slice of cheese. Wait your turn. Three, two, one. Fat. Confusion again. Fat. Fat. How about that? This was always interesting. A piece of cake. Three, two, one. Majority, I think, got that one right. Carbohydrate. A lot of times people associate sweets with fat. Like, it makes me fat. So it must be fat. And it's carbohydrates, actually. Broccoli. Three, two, one. Oh, because it's a health food, it must be protein. Carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. Salmon. Okay? In case you didn't know what that was. It's a portion of salmon. Three, two, one. Protein. Had me worried. Brownie. Three, two, one. Got it. This is ice cream, not mashed potatoes. Three, two, one. Because ice cream makes us. It's a carb. It's a carb. <laughs> happy okay so I could go I could do that for days I could do that for days and I, I've done that in front of hundreds of people and it's always the same confusion if we can't classify what is a protein carbon fat how do any of these diets work you know if we don't understand Kiko calories in calories out macronutrients if we understand and we get brilliant at the basics if we understand these things we will become fad proof the next thing that comes down the line won't confuse us we won't be victims of it. We won't drop a few pounds only to gain 10 more back, okay? Fad proof information. So what if we just learned these habits? What if we had our hand at our disposal at all times and we looked down and we knew how much protein we we're supposed to have, we knew how many carbohydrates we were supposed to have, how many fruits and veggies we were supposed to have and how much fat. If you were empowered with that information, yeah, you gotta have some discipline to do it, but you would no longer be a victim to all the, uh, the media hysteria around nutrition because the whole goal of the media is to confuse you and to keep you in this perpetual state of buying stuff when you can just figure it out for yourself. So here's some other habits that you can go from being that, if you saw in the beginning there was that confused caveman and the perplexed penguin in the beginning, here's how you become a wise owl in the realm of nutrition. It's learn these habits. Learn these habits. And if you want to add in a few other ones, get good sleep. You can just take a page out of the coronavirus habits to avoid. Get better sleep. Exercise. Strength train three times per week. Learn these habits with your macros. Do it consistently and you will become fad proof and you will become the healthiest version of yourself. And once you learn it, teach it to your family. Once your family learns it, teach it to another family, then a community grabs hold of it, then a city takes hold of it, and then we can reverse this nasty, nasty trend of obesity in our country. Do these things and it'll work, I promise. Thanks for having me. God bless.